Hello everyone, this video covers section 7.2, confidence interval for, for mu, when sigma is unknown, so this should be unknown. Remember in section 7.1, uh, sigma was known, now sigma is unknown, which means you have to replace it by something else, which we're going to replace it by the approximation which is s now this section is almost identical to section 7.1 except that step one is different if you remember in section 7.1 step one was given to you all the time it was always one of the values 1.96 2.58 and so forth so now these values are going to be different every time so the first thing we need to do is learn how to figure out the new values and for that you need a, a new table the table is in a canvas in the same place where there is the standard normal table so you'll be you will be able to find it there and it will say t distribution the table looks like this to read this table is actually easier than the t table because you only have to look to to one line there is something called the degrees of freedom which is this number on the corner and to find the degrees of freedom is going to be n minus 1 so once you have the degrees of freedom you're going to look only to that line let's say the degrees of freedom is 10 then the answer has to be this one this one this one this one or this one you only have five choices depending on the value of alpha over 2, okay? The relationship between the degrees of freedom is this. So if you know the degrees of freedom, you know the value for n, and if you know the value for n, you know the degrees of, of freedom. So, for example, in this problem, the first one, this is how the notation is going to be. This part is technically the alpha or alpha over 2 and this is the degrees of freedom for this particular case this means that n is actually equals to 21 because 21 minus 1 is is 20 so what you do is go to the degrees of freedom you know that is a number 20 so you have 20 degrees of freedom here so the answer has to be one of these values. Now, which one has 0 0.025 for t is this one. Therefore, the number you want is 2.086. So hence, this is equals to 2.086. And the point of doing this is that this is going to replace step one from section 7.1 by the way in chapter 7 this is all you need to know how to figure out this value but in chapter a 9 and 10 it's very important you understand what this really means what this means this is related to this notation which we did in the at the end of 6.1 what this really means is this the probability that t is greater than 2.086 if you have 20 degrees of freedom is equals to point zero to five or more importantly it means that if you have 2.086 here that this area where we used to be what we used to call the green area for z is equals to point zero two five so this is very similar to what we did before again for the purpose of chapter seven this is all you need to figure out for now. But you need to understand in chapter A, 9, and so forth, that this actually means this. All right, so you should stop the video and try to find these three values by yourself. All right, so let's try part, part B. For part B, uh, the alpha or the alpha over 2 is 0 0.05. And watch out with the... The decimals, remember that 0 0.05 is exactly the same thing as just 0 0.05, okay? 
okay you don't need to have the zero before and the degrees of freedom here is equals to to 10. so just like the previous example look to 10 degrees of freedom which is this one and you 1.05 or 0 50 which is this so the answer will be 1.812 so this is 1.812 that's it all right let's do the same thing for 22 you have 22 degrees of freedom this is what you have the value for alpha over 2 is 0 0.005 which is this so the answer will be 2.819 so this is 2.819 so you can see how this is very easy to find these values again the point of finding this is that this is going to replace step 1 in section 7.1 all right okay now let's try the last one so here the degrees of freedom is 13 and the value for uh, alpha is 0.1 so 13 is here and you look to 0.1 is this one so the answer is 2.650 so this is 2.650 that's it right so as you can see this is very very easy to find again uh, remember that this means this the probability that t is greater than 2.650 if you have 13 degrees of freedom is equals to 0.01 that's all it means now in the homework in the handbook you have some questions that will ask you something like this to approximate the probability the t is greater than let's say 2.2 and then it will tell you n is equals to like 14 so this implies that the degrees of freedom will be 13 all right so this looks tricky at the beginning this is actually pretty pretty easy and it will be very very helpful in chapter a 9 and 10 so remember you have 13 degrees of freedom so 13 degrees of freedom is this and you're trying to find the number 2.2 okay so you have 13 degrees of freedom and you want 2.2 so if we focus on 13 degrees of freedom the number 2.2 is technically technically here so therefore the probability has to be between this one and this one which is 10 technically and 25 so the answer in the book it looks like this it will tell you that 0 0.010 is less than this probability less than 0 0.025 which can look pretty annoying or confusing you don't want to write it like this all you have to do is pick a number between 10 and 25 just watch out for the decimal places and you can literally pick whatever you want between those two for example this could be 0 0.012 or 0 0.024 0 0.02447 whatever you want the only thing you cannot do is pick 25 and 10 so as you can see this is this is pretty pretty simple okay so remember that the, the point of this was to find a confidence confidence interval and now we're using t instead of z so you can see how the process is identical except that before this was z of alpha over 2 and this was sigma but the process is, is identical also remember that in 7.1 this value was given so now you have to find it doing exactly what we did in the last the last page 
but the process is uh, almost identical. So I will say that this is like 96% the same as section 7.1, okay? By the way, how do we know that you had to use a Z instead of T? Because the questions are pretty much identical. And the idea is, is this. Um, if sigma is known, you're going to use Z. If sigma is unknown, you're going to use T. But most of the time, if sigma is known and is usually more than 30, and when sigma is unknown, n is usually less than less than 30. So that's how you can distinguish between the two. Otherwise, it will be tricky to tell. So now, let's look to this example. It says the mayor of LA wants to estimate the true average. So it's talking about mu. So that's what you want to approximate. And then it says a survey of 25 employees. So n is 25, which is less than 30. It tell, it's telling you that this had a mean of 19 and a standard deviation of of 5. Okay, so in this case, this is actually sigma. And this is not sigma, this is S, so the standard deviation is 5. Because remember, uh, sigma is unknown, so you have to find S instead. But notice the question is the same. It will ask you find a 95% confidence interval for the mean just like in section 7.1. So therefore here, alpha is 0 0.05, just like before. Okay. So for step one, we do exactly the same thing within 7.1, alpha divided by two is 0 0.025. So therefore now you need to find T of 0 0.025, and the degrees of freedom is gonna be 24. So if we look to the table, this is equal to 2.064. And you should check that this is a value. By the way, this will be pretty much the only step that is different. This value was given to you before. So if this was Z, they, this will always be 1.96. But now you're using T instead of Z. All right now for step two, you need to find the margin of error like before. So now this is going to be T of alpha over 2 times S divided by the square root of N. So in this case, this will be 2.064 times S, which is 5, divided by the square root of N, which is 25. And this is technically 2.064. And I'm just going to round this to 2 because it's talking about money. Then we do exactly the, the same thing we did before. It will be x bar plus or minus e, which in our case will be 25, uh, not 25, 19, sorry, 19, plus or minus 2. And then the answer will be mu is between 21 and 17. So remember the explanation is that the, the mayor is 95% confident that city employees uh, make between between uh, 17 and 21 dollars per hour that's it so you can see this is very very similar to 7.1 the only difference is that now you have to find this which was given to you before you can also find this in the the calculator remember to get to the calculator uh, you need to have a stat first then test and scroll down, we want to have one, two, and so forth. So keep going until you get to number eight, which will say T interval. 
and then it's going to ask you for the information x bar s they call it as x and n and then the c level so in our example this is 19 this is 5 this is 25 and this is 0 0.95 again the answer on the screen is just gonna look like this 17 to 21 and then it will tell you x bar is 19 and n is 25 but it will not write the answer like this make sure you know you know how to do this part and also how to explain it and that's it so you can see this is very 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 simple all right let's do another example sometimes um the question just gives you the the data but you still know that you need to find a confidence interval because that's what the question is is asking okay but here you don't have really much information besides the data so before you start you need to figure out what x bar is and also what s is using the uh, formulas from chapter 3.1 and 3.2 or you can just use the, the calculator i'll show you how to do that in section 3.1 well you do know that alpha is 0 0.01 because you want a 99 percent confidence interval remember to find x bar to find x bar you have to add all the values 3 plus 5 plus 6 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 and then divide by the total which is 6 now you should check this by yourself this is actually 5.83 okay so this is 5.83 and the standard deviation is actually 1.7 remember for the standard deviation you can use the calculator or you can use this formula remember this formula we use it in section 3.3.2 so from here you find s square take the square root and it will give you this value okay all right so once you have that then this is identical to the last the last problem notice here that the value for n is six and that's important because you need that value to find the degrees of freedom so for step one uh, alpha divided by two it will be 0 0.005 then uh, we need to figure out t of point zero zero five with five degrees of freedom. Why five? Because n is six, so therefore the degrees of freedom will be six minus one, which is five. So if we look to the table. This is equals to four point zero three two. Then for the step two the margin of error is going to be 4.032 times s which is equals to 1.7 divided by the square root of 6 and this is around 2.79a or you run it to two decimal places this is around 2.80 then step three, remember you had to do x bar plus or minus e. So in this case, this will be um, five point eighty three plus or minus two point eighty. So if you add, you'll end up with eight point sixty three. All depends how you round it, and if you subtract you'll end up with around 3.03 .03. that's it and then explain this so as you can see finding confidence intervals is very 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 simple once you find these values you can also use the calculator you don't want to uh, go through the steps but you should do all the steps at least once or twice and then use the calculator to check it's a very good idea to know how to do all the steps they're going to be very useful in other chapters all right so that's it for 7.2